great pleasure and a great privilege to have the President of the United States here with us today. Uh, Mr. President, the crew down here at Kennedy have asked me to present to you one of the stones from the crawler way. The first three miles of the trip to the moon is taken right here at Cape Kennedy. This is one of the stones that the big transporter rolled over in the way out. We'd like you to have that as a memento of this very successful launch today. Thank you. Well, Dr. Payne and all of you here at Cape Kennedy for this occasion, I do want to say that it's been a very great privilege to be here and speaking for Mrs. Nixon and my daughter who are here with me, uh, we think this trip, our trip from Washington to here was definitely worthwhile. Uh, when I announced uh, earlier in the week that I was trying to arrange my schedule to come down, there were those who said, well, why can't you see it all on television? And it is true that I have seen some previous launches on television, but I thought I would share with you the experience of one who has never seen a launch live before and what the difference is. And I, perhaps if I may use the analogy of sports, I really believe, while I like to go to a football game uh, to live and to feel the crowd and the rest, I really believe that you can sit at home and see a football game on television, probably see it as well or even better than you can see it by being there. Because the camera will watch that T formation quarterback and will be sure you are watching the ball rather than the fake. But while that is true in the field of sports, of football and baseball, it simply is not true in the case of what we have just seen a few moments ago. Here, it's a sense of not just the sight and the picture, but of feeling it, feeling the great experience and all that has gone into it. And I would add to that by saying that coming here and coming to this room uh, brings an extra dimension to this great space launch that we've seen a moment ago. Uh, Dr. Payne and Frank Borman and Colonel Stafford and a lot of my friends in this uh, activity have often told me that remember that the three who were up there couldn't be there except for tens of thousands on the ground. Uh, tens of thousands of people and who sometimes may seem to be and you may feel you're faceless. Uh, just numbers and just like the computers that we see in front of you. I do want you to know that I realize that except for what you are doing here, they couldn't be there, and they would not make this mission successful. And I think that you can be proud of the fact, and we're proud of the fact, that every one of our astronauts, when they've come to the White House, and I've had the privilege of entertaining several of them, every one of them makes the point that those on the ground, the engineers and the technicians and the scientists and all of those who work in the program, that they are really the heart of this great successful uh, experience for the American people and for all the people of the world. Uh, and finally, I simply want to say that I know there's been a lot of discussion as to what the future of the space program is. As you know, we've been discussing that in the cabinet uh, and within the administration. Uh, I do think you can be assured that in Dr. Payne and his colleagues, uh, you have men who are dedicated to this program, who are making the case for it, making the case for it as against other national priorities and making it very effectively. Uh, I leaned in the direction of the program before. After hearing what they have had to say with regard to our future plans, uh, I must say that I lean even more in that direction. Uh, announcements will be made in the future as, as, they, as they have been made in the past as to the commitment of this nation to the program. And I realize that within those in the program, between scientists and engineers and others, there are different attitudes as to what the emphasis should be, whether we should emphasize more, more exploration or more in taking the knowledge that we have already acquired and making practical applications of it. Uh, all of these matters have been brought to my attention. I can assure you every side is getting a hearing. We want to have a balanced program, but most important, we are going forward. America, the United States, is first in space. We're proud to be first in space. We don't say that in any jingoistic way. We say it because as Americans, uh, we want to give uh, the people of this country, and particularly our
our young people the feeling that there here is an area that we can concentrate for a positive goal. Concentrate and be proud of being Americans. Be proud of what we have accomplished, not only for ourselves, but for future generations and for the whole world. And in that vein, I simply want to say, I'm proud of those three men up there. I talked to them on the phone before they left, and I'm just as proud of everybody in this room and of the thousands across this country that made it possible. You're part of a great organization. The whole nation owes you a debt of gratitude, and as President of the United States, I express that debt and acknowledge it today. Thank you. And uh, here is Mrs. Nixon, I think you would like to know, uh, well, uh, that uh, she is the woman I'm with today, at least, <laughs> and every day. And, uh, and the, I, the, the girl in, is that The girl in lilac is Tricia, our daughter. Uh, and also, well, of course, he needs our introduc introduction because he has been to several of these launches as uh, chairman of the Space Council. Uh, we're very happy to have today uh, the Vice President of the United States and Mrs. Agnew. They're over here. I can see them all, but we have Senator Margaret Chase Smith of the state of Maine, a real space <laughs> enthusiast. <laughs> Senator Gurney of Florida, who told me the weather would be perfect today if I just got. <laughs> we have several congressmen here. Congressman Spray from, where is he? Over there. Yes. Your own congressman from this area. <laughs> congressman Fulton from Pennsylvania, also on the Space Committee. <laughs> Share for them real hard because they get your appropriations for you. Congressman Burke from that little pocket of poverty, Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> and Congressman Bill Kramer. Is he here? He must be campaigning. Well, anyway. <laughs> and then I think, too, you would like to see that we have the, my, the science advisor from sunny California, Lee DuBridge, over here. President Science Advisor. Well, after being an MC here, I think I'll ask for Johnny Carson's job next week. Thank you. Thank you very much. 